seize the opportunity. Let me take advantage of the privilege that God has given here. Somebody will be hating on you. Man, we went to kindergarten together. Why you got crying? I just I mean I want you to understand. They can't, they can't embrace it because they look at you and you're you're just they say, man, you're the one. You keep reminding me. And because of that haterade that's inside of them, they can't embrace you for what God is trying to take you to. Does that make sense to anybody? Amen. So you don't have to go to bed tonight tossing to one. Why are they treat me this way? And how come? Because they ain't that they can handle. Come on, somebody. And you 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 got you got too too much in the in the mind to be hanging out with somebody that's nuts. You gotta say, let me seize the opportunity and move forward. Your going coming back is not gonna change anything because takers never change. will be the same way next year as they are this year. They'll be talking the same old stuff. Hello, somebody. They always got a great plan. Oh, here's what we need to do. They never, they never act on the plan. They just talk about the plan. Amen. Oh, my God. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Who's he talking to now? See, you gotta understand. Are y'all gonna be alright with me? I almost feel like I'm too far away from you. My God. Go ahead, scoot up back. Come on. I think I'm gonna end up down there. Uh, see, I want us to understand. You got to value the sacrifice that was made. Because that's how you have privilege. They don't explore, they don't take advantage of it. They're not seizing the opportunity. You don't understand, people died. This thing is for real. People died for the sac sacrifice they life for stuff you got now. Hello, somebody. Now, I, now for, in my heart, I feel this way, for real. Brother Dix, I feel this way. I mean, you know, my, my parents did great sacrifice for me to be where I'm at. My, 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 my father, we were just tenant farmers growing up. He, he farmed, worked for other folk. Shame on me if I went to school. Didn't study. Hello, somebody. Was hanging out at some cue party. <laughs> Funking midterms and stuff. Shame on me if I did that. Because they sacrificed. Y'all ain't hearing me anymore. See, 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 my mother cleaned other folks' bathroom. They, they sacrifice. Y'all ain't gonna catch this thing. They sacrifice. Shame on me if I did not seize the opportunity to be the very best that I could be. Hello, somebody. See, you, you gotta understand when you get privilege, that's special. Do something with it. Somebody say, do something with it. Something with it. We, 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 don't, we don't even embrace the fact people died. We got our 44th president, Barack Obama, in place. First African American. He's president of these United States. Shame on him. He's not the best president he can be. Because somebody died for him to be in that spot. Well, who are you talking about, preacher? His mama died? No, 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 no. No, no. April the 4th, 1968. Amen. In Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. Somebody died. Amen. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. died. Amen. So he could have the opportunity. Y'all ain't hearing me. They're connected. He died. He got paid the way, baby. Amen. And you got to look around your own life, your own situation. I said, so folk died. For me to ride in the car I'm riding in. For me to live in the community. I'm living in Somebody died for me to go to the shops that I go to now. Don't act, don't walk around here and act like you belong, like you all that. No, baby. Somebody died. Sister Amy, some sacrifices were made for you to be where you are right now. 
And that's why y'all do something with me. Somebody say, do something with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get back to this text. Y'all you know, look like y'all struggling with me. The Bible says, back there in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11, For we who are alive are always being given over to the death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. In verse number 12. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you too. What, what, what Paul is saying is, during this personification, we got two things going on. We're growing because death and life are both in you. We represent the death of Jesus, but we also represent the life of Jesus. So we, there, we, there should be continual growth in us. You don't want to hang around and, and try to live as though you don't need to grow. Your, your life ought to be different this year than it was last year. Not that we're perfect. Every year that you live, it's going to be a growth year. You're going to say, I need to stretch, I need to grow, I need to better represent Christ in my life. Because God's going to be killing some stuff, but he's raising up, giving you some opportunities in some other areas. That's why you don't allow people in your life. If somebody comes in your life based on simply because of what you did in the past, you got the wrong person. Hello, somebody. If they want to be attached to you only because of what you did in the past, they're going to drain you. What you need is somebody that can see what God is going to do in your life. Because they can speak into your life because, Sister Monica, they can begin to talk about, now, girl, you need to go on because I see this, this, and this in you. If you ain't careful, you'll rest on where you came from. And yet God is still up to something, wanting to do some more in your life. So you need some people that don't have haterade and say, yep, I see God working in you. I, I see the Holy Spirit. He's stretching you. And you need people that will encourage you in that. Not be talking about, girl, you done made it. Hello, somebody. Man, you the bomb. You don't need all that now. Amen. That'll mess you up. That'll mess your thinking up. You'll stop growing because you think you have arrived. And so you need to grow and get to the next level. Because you've got to understand with the creativity inside of you, you can get to the next level. Are y'all hearing me in here? The Bible says, verse 13, 14, and 15, he says here, it's written, I believe, therefore I've spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe, and therefore we speak. Continue on. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. Next verse. And, and all of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. In other words, Paul said, we got a purpose. And this purpose, as it's played out in your life, will bring glory to God. There's a reason why God made you so cute. Some of y'all laugh. Touch your neighbor. Say, neighbor. He's talking to me right now. See, there's a reason why you pray. Do something with that. There's a reason why you're handsome. Do something with that. There's a reason why you, you got creativity. Do something with that. The reason, there's a reason why you got some intellect. Do something with it. Why y'all looking at me strange? Somebody said, you ain't talking to me, are you? Pay? I'm talking to you. There's a reason why God made you the way you are. You don't have to run from it. You can embrace it and say, yeah, just because you're a person of privilege, you ain't got to apologize. No. Hello, somebody. If you know you're the bomb, you're just the bomb. You're just flowing the fact I'm the bomb. That God made me the bomb. It's all right. It's all right you understand you the power. God has made you a person of privilege. You handsome, you pretty, you got it together. Do something with it. That's the key. Do something with it. Are you all right, Carmen? I'm going to be all right. Just get your fan out. Get your fan out. You know your pastor, get your fan out. Mm. See, you need to embrace who and what God made you to be. We live in a day and age. We even got a lot of young people. Those of you working in the school system know they will dummy down so they can have some friends. They, they, they dummy down because I want to be accepted by this group and that group. See, that's what they're saying when they, when they don't want to turn their homework in. When they, when, when they want to dress and look like so and so, what, why you got to look like them? Be you. Go on and say, I am bad. I am bad. I'm fearfully, wonderfully made. 
And I've already figured it out. So don't you be hating. Because I ain't coming down to you. If I'm up on the ladder, what sense do it make for me to come down off the ladder? Hello, somebody. It's far wiser. I let you come on up the ladder, too. Come on. Amen. Jesus put a ladder down. Anybody can come. He said, whosoever will, let him come. You just got to get on the ladder. Don't be asking me to come off the ladder to hang out with your crazy self. Come on, somebody. I got too much joy to be throwing a pity party. I think I just said something. I said I got too much joy to be throwing a pity party. Hanging out with why mama didn't do this. Why daddy didn't do that. How come the teacher didn't do this? I ain't got time for all that. I'm going up the ladder. Hello, somebody. I figured out something. If God be for me, who can be against me? So I might as well go on up the ladder. Hey, but Pastor, what, what, what about them family members that ain't coming? I'm going to pray for them. Hey, I can do more for them up on top of the ladder. I can't down on the ground. Really. Hello, somebody. Somebody got to be on top. They can help the ones at the bottom. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it might as well be me. All right, I'm, let me, my time is about it. Let me raise up out of here. What we got to do you see, you see, in order to grab this, you got to see the sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross. See, in the midst of this death and life concept that Paul is presenting, he's wanting us to take a real good look at the cross. He's wanting us to see Jesus on the cross because he represents that ultimate sacrifice. See, he died that we might live. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, I come that you might have a life and that you might have it more abundantly, more abundantly. So, see, so when, when we look at the cross, we need to see the fact that you don't know, think about the nails that was put in his hands. He sacrificed for us. When you think about the blood that came running down, he sacrificed for us. When you think about the spear that was put in his side, he sacrificed for us. When you think about, you think about how they put a nail in his feet, Brother Mike, he sacrificed for us. So every time you look at that car you rode up in, you need to say from Calvary, he sacrificed so I can ride in this car. He sacrificed so I can live in this house. Every time you go to your closet, you think about he sacrificed so I can put clothes on my back. Who am I to, to be acting like God has not done anything for me? I need to be able to look at Calvary and say, because of Calvary, just for Tammy, I'm going to do all I can and be all I can for the Lord. Do y'all hear me in here? I came by today on my way to heaven to tell us, do something with it. God, for the rock gave you a mind, do something with it. God gave you creativity. Do something with it. God gave you power. Do something with it. God gave you favor. Do something with it. God gave you anointing. Do something with it. God do something with it. God gave you blessing after blessing after blessing. Do something with it. God gave you intellect. Do something with it. I got news for you. God is trying to raise up a generation that will stand. 